because we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children, and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins, and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enlighten our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The one who endures to the end will be saved. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice in the presence of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers. Consider well her ramparts, go, go to her citadels, that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. You will guide us forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. One who endures to the end will be saved. The first reading is from Daniel chapter 12. As we come to the end of the church year, we look forward to the end of time as prophesied by Daniel. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. At that time shall arise Michael, 
the great prince who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since. There was a nation till that time, but at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and eternal contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from Hebrews chapter 10. We look to these verses and see Jesus work for us at the cross as a sacrifice for all time. We also recognize him as the great high priest whose work cleanses us and washes us so that we may enter the holy places of God. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, <coughs> for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel reading. according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be, 
And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard. For they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say but say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not who you speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess together the common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. For then he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life of the last life. Amen. At this, you may be seated. At this time, the children may come up for the children's message. and girl. Glad to see you here in God's house. I think it's kind of neat that all you brothers are sitting socially distanced. I guess that's because because of the pandemic, not because you love each other so much, huh? Uh, I bet you didn't know that I was your grandpa's pastor once upon a time. And now I get to sit in the pew with him once in a while. Anyway, to help me with my little message this morning, I brought along something. And I don't know whether you know what this thing is called, but I'll kind of show it to you a little bit, and if you know what it, you know what that's called, a calendar. Very, very good. You got one of those at your house? You got one of those in your room? Probably not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what does a calendar do? Yeah. Yeah, it tells what day it is, doesn't it? Yeah. We have different days. We have different days of the week, don't we? You know the days of the week? Yeah. What's the day? Sunday. All right. Do you know what month of the year it is? November. That's pretty good. You, you, know, you know what day in November it is? Sunday, November what? Seven times two. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's November the 14th, which is my son's birthday. He's, he's 50 years old today. That must make me at least 51, right? Uh, and it was my grandfather's birthday. He was, he was born way back there in the 1800s. Wow. He would be really old today, wouldn't he? Uh, and what year is it? Do you know? 2020, right? No, it's 21, isn't it? Yeah, it's 21. I almost forgot. 
Uh, and, and look at this calendar. This is a calendar for what year? What year is that? 2022. So this is a calendar for next year, isn't it? So this, had, this, had, this has days and numbers and months in it that we haven't had a chance to live in yet and be blessed by God in yet, have we? And what, what hasn't happened yet, you know what we call that? We call that the future. We look forward to certain things in the future, don't we? We're going to eat, probably get to eat some turkey here in about 10 days. What, 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 what fun day is coming up in about 10 days? Thanksgiving. I was born on a Thanksgiving day a few years ago. Yeah. I was, yeah, yeah, it was actually Thanksgiving. Uh, and then about a month from Thanksgiving, oh, there's a, little, there's a little day coming up where we celebrate somebody's birthday, the most important person's birthday. Who's that? Jesus' birthday, and that's called Christmas, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, including the most, who's the most important Christian, Christian, Christmas present you ever got? Yeah. You got that right. Okay, so we, we, we're looking forward to that, and we're looking forward to the new year, but we don't know what's going to happen, do we? We don't know what's going to happen in the future, do we? Does anybody know what's going to happen in the future? Yeah, who knows? Jesus knows, doesn't he? He knows what the future is. Now, if we pray to Jesus and we ask Jesus what was going to happen in the future, would he tell us? No. He tells us some things, but he doesn't tell us exactly when they're going to happen. One of the most important things he tells us is that he's coming again someday, and when he comes again someday, and it could be yet this year, it could be next year, could be when you get to be as old as I am someday, and I bet I'll be in heaven already by then. Uh, but we don't, we don't know that. Uh, and why do you think Jesus doesn't, doesn't tell us what's going to happen in the future? Yeah. yeah. I think I know why. You know why? Because he wants us just to trust him to give us what we need every other tomorrow in our lives. Uh, and if we trust Jesus and we let the future up to him and trust him to keep his promises, everything will work out just fine, won't it? Uh, let's thank him for our days and, uh, and, uh, and for taking care of us, okay? Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for calendars and days here on earth filled with your blessings, including the blessing of knowing you believing in you, and being saved. Give us faith and trust to let you take care of our future. Thank you for doing so. Amen. Thank you for coming up and let me share that important word from God with you. Return to your seats. We're going to sing the sermon hymn.
Grace be unto you in peace this morning from God our Father and from our Lord and coming Savior Jesus Christ, who loves it whenever we listen carefully to his every word and with childlike faith accept his holy answers to our sometimes holy and sometimes not so holy questions. I invite you to listen carefully once again to the opening words of the revealing conversation that takes place between Jesus and his first disciples in this morning's gospel lesson. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what beautiful stones and wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. This is the word of the Lord to us today. Dear fellow followers of Jesus Christ who are interested about our future, and are called in faith to believe that our futures are secure because of what our coming Lord and Savior has done and promised to do. Question, do you ever wonder about the future? Wonder what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next year to you, to your loved ones, to this church family, to this beautiful church building or maybe to this spiritually sick country of ours well of course you do so do I and guess what that's okay says Jesus in our gospel lesson it is okay for us his followers to wonder notice I said wonder not worry about the future but there is of course a right way and there is of course a wrong way for us to wonder about the future of things and the right way always begins and ends with us taking all of our questions and concerns about the future to him And that's what Matthew tells us Peter and James and John and Andrews, those four special fishing buddies, remember? That's what they wisely did one day, just a few days before Jesus suffered and died on the cross to save them and to save us. And that's exactly what lots and lots of followers of Jesus Christ in this world today and yesterday don't do sometimes, isn't it? Oh, we have lots and lots of questions, lots and lots of concerns, lots and lots of worries about the future, about just about everything and everybody, don't we? But instead of faithfully looking first, last, and always to Jesus and to the Word of God for His comforting answers to our questions and concerns about the future, we often foolishly look for answers in other places. Look to other people, read their uninspired speculations, listening to their frightening and unblessed best guesses as to what's in store for us tomorrow on this late great planet Earth. Once again this morning as I read the newspaper briefly before coming here to church this morning, I noticed people making all sorts of guesses as to what was going to happen in the future, especially economically with the inflation that's happening in our country. And so I repeat what I said a moment ago, so that you don't forget the right way for us followers of Jesus to wonder about the future is to take our questions and concerns to Jesus. I don't know what your particular questions, concerns about the future are this morning. We found out last Sunday in our canvassing what some of the questions, concerns of people were, and we'll share those with you uh, in a newsletter that's coming up, what their answers were. They're kind of interesting in some ways. 
Uh, but we do know what Peter, James, and John, and Andrew were wondering and worrying about that day 2,000 years ago when they talked it over with Jesus. So why don't we take a look at his holy answers to their questions and see if that helps, see if that comforts us in any way. I suspect that it will. Now what the disciples of Jesus were wondering and worrying about mostly that long time ago was the future of their big, beautiful church building, the temple, and their holy city, the city of Jerusalem. And actually it was, was sort of Jesus himself who got them wondering and worrying about that one day when he said to them as they were coming out of the temple after worship, not one stone here will be left upon another, every one will be thrown down. I'm sure they didn't listen carefully to everything that Jesus said, but I'm sure they listened to him when he said that. What? This building's going to be gone? Our beautiful holy city is going to be a pile of rubble? So their logical question to Jesus was, when is this terrible thing going to happen? What are the signs out there so that we know when it's going to happen and can prepare ourselves better for it? Now Jesus, of course, being the Son of God and knowing everything, could have just answered their question straight up. He could have said, well, it's going to happen in about 40 years around 70 AD and guess what the Romans no surprise are going to be the hated meanies who are going to come and do it and also no surprise they're going to be pushed into doing it by a bunch of zealous Christ, zealous Jewish idiots who are going to revolt who are going to force the Romans to come and starve them out and level the temple and every other beautiful thing here in this holy city of Jerusalem. And you know that's what actually did happen. You know that for a historical fact. But instead of answering their question that way, Jesus said, watch out, see that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming to be me, and many of you will be deceived. You know, that's sort of what seems to be going on a lot in our country and in our world right now, doesn't it? Many Christian people getting confused, deceived by many people, many false ideas and things. And so Jesus says, watch out, don't let that happen to you. Instead of worrying about the future, as we wonder about the future and specific things about the future, the only important thing for us to do is watch out and make sure that nobody who comes into our life, that nothing that ever happens to us down here on earth keeps us from continuing to believe in him as our Lord and Savior. Because our future looks very bad if we lose our faith in him, doesn't it? We lose it all spiritually then, don't we? Heaven and eternal life are no longer in our future if we lose our faith in Jesus. So just keep the faith, live a truly Christian life and just tell it like the Bible says it is, Jesus says. And especially he says, don't be afraid to tell it like it is when someone backs you into a spiritual corner and puts you on the faith spot. And if the Holy Spirit of God comes and gives you the faith in Jesus Christ to do that when push comes to shove, then do not be surprised if everybody around you doesn't stand up and say, hooray, good for you, good job, pat you on the back. In fact, just the opposite. Many supposedly good people around you, maybe even some of your good friends, even members of your whole family, may not be very happy if you do that, may think you are crazy to take Jesus and his word and his simple promises of forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation and heaven so seriously. 
Also, he says, do not be surprised if just as many bad and sad and evil and unfair things happen to you as to others around you who appear to not care one bit about Jesus. So, what do you think of Jesus' answers to the questions of his disciples? Do they comfort you? Are they helpful? Are they enough? <coughs> or does Jesus, or do Jesus' answers here in, in our text to our questions about our future frustrate you and leave you asking for more? More signs, more information, more encouragement. You know, there's a tendency <clears throat> as we try to live in simple childlike faith our lives here on this earth and I don't think it gets any easier the older we get uh, there's a tendency uh, for us to always want to know a little bit more you know, to live even more by sight instead of by faith so again Jesus reminded his disciples that day and he reminds us that we need to be little children in our faith we need to live by faith alone because when we ask Jesus questions like this, all we're going to get from him again and again and again is just trust me. Just follow me. Just let me take care of all your tomorrows to be with you and bless you and forgive you and lead you and guide you all the way to heaven. Because that's what your Father in heaven who sent me here to be your brother your Lord and Savior knows is best. He knows that his gift of faith will always be enough. Enough to get you through life's toughest days, enough to get you all the way to heaven. Where, of course, there won't ever be any more tough days, will there? My friends, the devil and a host of other people here on this earth are going to at times try real hard to convince us that there must be a better way to live out the days of this thing called life than to just trust Jesus. That's too simple. But my friends, there is no other way. There is no other truth. There is no other life to be had than that which we have been gifted with by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. The bottom line of Jesus Christ has a place in your heart when your head hits the pillow again tonight. Sleep well, child of God, and don't worry your pretty little saved soul about the future. Amen? May it be so. Amen. As we prepare for the prayers now, the offering will be brought forth.
for our good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, holy Lord, for the fruits of the earth provided by your hand, supply the needs of all who grow, process, and distribute our food, and move us to share these bountiful gifts with our neighbors in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Behold the sick and infirm, the dying and all in need, especially Barb, Brenda, Jane, Elaine, Paul, Judy, Wayne, Marcello, and Kate. We pray as well for those suffering from cancer along with their family, including Adela, Becky, Tracy, Van, David, Debbie, Anne, Al, and Paul. Grant them healing of body and patience to endure their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Additionally, we pray for members here at this congregation, Robert Schaefer, Ken Dale, Cindy, Jane, Heather, and Lennon Chicken Eggs. Keep them in your care this week, and may all they do in vocation be according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, grant these in all our petitions, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We pray together the prayer the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as you forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. The service continues with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give thanks it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love showed to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death so that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Blessed are you, O Lord, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and justly you barred them and all their children from the tree of life. And yet, in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of the cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. You may be seated.
Please rise. And now may the true body and true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and encourage you in your faith and following Jesus into your sure and certain future of life eternal from heaven. Go in peace. Amen. give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and into an ever-growing love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn.